everybody. This is Chris DiPurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco. They've been making espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. They are at the pinnacle of quality, dependability, beauty, and innovation. Machines like the KB90 espresso machine that uses straight in locking portafilters for ergonomics, scales in the drip tray for accuracy of your extractions, as well as the auto flush feature, which keeps your group heads clean and the workflow going smoothly. That's just one example of many different types of espresso machines La Marzocco has created to suit your needs. And La Marzocco is available to help you select the right equipment for your shop. Go ahead and email info at lamarzoccousa.com and they will get you set up with the right gear for your context. Lots of amazing coffee machines to choose from, all there to serve your needs as a coffee shop owner and operator. Again, email them info at lamarzoccousa.com and check out their website lamarzoccousa.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who is creating custom branded mobile apps for coffee shops. People that want to have their customers experience a extension of their brand in the palm of their hand and not just be a dot on a map, but actually own that part of the customer's phones, basically. You know, you want coffee, you open up your favorite coffee shop's app. The logo's there, the menu's there. And it's a no risk model with Espressly. There's no setup or development fees. You get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All of the data is stored in the app and it integrates with some of the world's best payment processing systems. And that of course includes Square. So go ahead and reach out to Espressly today to have them get started on your app. Check out their website over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everyone. Well, I wanted to talk to you today about something that is, it's kind of a procrastination that happens with leadership. And it's about correction. When you see somebody doing something that is not correct, oftentimes what will happen is you will not let them know. And maybe this is just a certain group of people. Maybe you have no problem being confrontational. Maybe you have too much of a problem being confrontational and you need to balance it a, a different way. But today I want to talk about the people who have a problem with creating momentum to actually be decisive, take the first step and broach the topic with the person doing something incorrect. And I think the reason why we don't correct people as often as we probably need to is because we worry that they're going to respond in such a way that they're offended by us correcting them. And the way that we go about correcting people may actually be offensive. There's this concept called the manager's landscape that Bruce Tulgan talks about in his book, It's Okay to Be the Boss. And this landscape is basically just a series of questions that asks, who is this person at work? What needs to be managed? Where do they need to be managed? How do they need to be managed? And it's the how that I think is of importance. First of all, we have to accept that people do need to be managed. They need to be led and managed. There is a status quo. There is a standard, if you like. Actually, standard would be a better way to describe status quo. Status quo gives us the idea that, well, you know, this is just the way we do things. Instead of, this is what we aspire to do and this is our standard. Sounds better that way, doesn't it? And that's what we want. We have a high standard. We want people to meet it. And for that reason, we need to offer ourselves as resources for people to achieve that standard. We're part of a team. And communication about how to achieve that standard requires that you correct people when you see the standard not being met. But if you view your role as somebody who needs to simply observe people doing the right thing instead of helping people do the right thing, then when people do the wrong thing, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to come at it with so much emotion that people will see it a mile away and they will immediately have their hackles up. And they will push against it. And you will see that and say, yeah, I was wrong to actually confront them. Maybe I'll just quietly manage them out. You know, I wasn't managing them before very well, but now I'm going to manage them out. So we'd rather manage people out <laughs> than manage people in, I guess. But you as a resourcer, you as a leader are there to help 
people by correcting them and also by affirming them. And so you have a balance there, of course, but our role as leaders has to be to keep people focused on the goal, which inevitably means that we have to make a common habit of correcting people, not by just kind of dropping in and saying, you're wrong, how dare you, but accepting that mistakes are a normal part of life and the pursuit of a common goal is going to be marked by many small and maybe sometimes some large failures, both by you and the people that you lead. And so if you accept that, then the idea that you will communicate to people fairly often about ways that they can improve or things that need to be corrected doesn't seem like such a terrible idea. But for those of us who struggle to bring something up for fear of being misinterpreted, we might have some work to do on the back end that is actually causing us to be hesitant. So that your hesitancy actually might be a sign that you've left something undone on the back end, that your approach to people might need some adjustment. Not that you don't approach people. That's not what I'm talking about. You need to accept that you need to communicate. And that's a habit. That's a thing. That's a part of your job description. So you don't opt out to say, well, I can't communicate. I'm not going to communicate at all. I'm not going to correct at all. I'm not going to coach at all because I can't do it well. You're going to ask yourself, well, what can I do to approach this from a better frame of mind? And sometimes that just means coming to terms with your authority and recognizing it and shifting it in your brain into a position of service to others, that you're a servant leader should be a given. That is how leadership should work in a hospitality environment. We've said so many times, your customers are your baristas, your customers are your managers, and so forth, right? Up the chain of command, so to speak. So all that said, we have to have the courage to correct. We have to have confidence to correct. And that comes from initially taking the first step. Courage, it may be technically a little bit more risky of a, a thing to do because you're putting faith in your ability to enter into this role of a coach and a facilitator of success. As you do it more often, you'll start to build confidence. And not only will you build confidence in yourself, as you have self-awareness, as you balance affirmation with coaching and correction, and you strive to be a servant to the group of people that are working with you and for you, they will have confidence in you as well. They will see you coming, and yeah, of course, you're going to maybe say, oh, let's do it this way, and they won't be all, who do they think they are, because they will know who you are, because they will have a history of frequent communication with you over time from a place of love, of service, of just being helpful, and that is something people can read. So you need to do this often in order to gain confidence. You need to be able to step into it and not away from it. Because if you step away from it and you don't correct and you don't communicate about things that need to be coached, what you end up doing is you tacitly are agreeing to a lower standard. Eventually, that will become something that makes you very mad or frustrated, and you might lash out. And this is where we see a lot of bad management and leadership happen. People leave companies, and it all, if we back it up, upstream, starts with having the courage to correct and viewing yourself as somebody who does so in service to others. So I hope that this was helpful for you today. As always, I am available if you have any questions or comments, if you send an email to chris at keys to the shop.com. That's C-H-R-I-S at keys to the shop.com. Also, I want to make you aware of the Keyholder Coaching Group that is launching in September. This is the inaugural group of five coffee shop owners who are going to be working together in community. I will be hosting these meetings. We will be meeting twice a month for two hours at a time. And uh, this goes on for six months. It's all about insights, support. It's about encouragement and problem solving and accountability in community with other coffee shop owners. And so if you're interested in that, you can reach out to me directly to get more information, or you can follow the link in the bio on Instagram or here in the show notes 
to fill out the form to be considered for this first inaugural group. So thanks again, everyone. I really appreciate you listening to these episodes, and I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.